What is going on everybody? It is Ozzy from OzTox Hardware and in light of AMD releasing their new Ryzen 7 chips on March 2nd, I'm going to do a little throwback analysis slash review of the AMD FX 8370, an 8 core 8 threaded chip from AMD based on their bulldozer lineup. Now I won't go into great detail but AMD's bulldozer lineup was expected to take the performance crown from Intel back in 2011. Rumors and leaks spread showing the eight core flagship absolutely annihilating Intel's core i7s and AMD's previous generation Phenom 2 processor. But when reviewers released their figures, it proved pretty disappointing. It was worse clock for clock and less efficient than their competition with very little to no improvements over the last architecture. Since then, AMD has made great strides to improve the bulldozer lineup with small IPC and efficiency gains. With that being said, they ended the bulldozer family with Excavator, which mostly includes budget Athlons and APUs and mobile processors. Like I mentioned earlier, I have the 8370 with me, a top of the line Vachera CPU based on Seamroller, the second generation of the bulldozer family. I got really close Close to the CPU the last 24 hours in light of Ryzen just to see a final look on how it performs before we go on to AMD's next architecture. I paired it with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory clocked at 1866 megahertz, an RX 480 8 gigabyte reference, a GTX 1070 8 gigabyte reference, and their respective latest drivers. Now I do want to take note of one thing before I begin with the benchmarks and that is with the gameplay minimums. Now with my older videos I did used to use the absolute minimums when it came to gameplay but now I realize that that's not the best way to convey gameplay ability because that takes into account major outliers. That includes when uh, games are loading uh, and glitches and things of that sort. So instead, I'm using 1% minimums, which is basically a way of saying that your game is going to be playing at this FPS or higher 99% of the time. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and kind of explain that before I move on to the benchmarks. Now, let's roll the benchmark reel. So as you can see by the benchmarks, AMD's last family of CPUs was not the best compared to the competition. It boasted first generation Core i7 performance at stock frequencies and it was bottlenecked pretty badly by high end GPUs. Granted, it is kind of unfair to pit a 32 nanometer CPU against 14 and 22 nanometer CPUs, but it's literally all we have, <laughs> so that's the way it has to be. Now the 8 cores are great for very specific scenarios such as Lightroom, but that's about it. If you're not using it for those very specific scenarios, then you're kind of out of luck when it comes to the CPU. Now, I'm not saying that performance is bad all around because it's not. It's definitely usable. As you can see, a lot of the games average 60 FPS or above, but you're not really getting your money's worth because it's going to be holding you back. There's no point in upgrading with the CPU past an RX 480 because you're not really seeing any benefit because the CPU is not fast enough for the graphics card. Now with all of that being said, this is why Ryzen is very, very important. It's definitely more than a worthy successor to the FX lineup and it's shaken up the CPU market with its price for performance. Now, I can't really say too much because NDA stuff, but it's looking pretty good based on what I've been seeing with my uh, own individual test. More on that this week, so stay tuned. But that's about it for this video, guys. If you guys liked it, then definitely leave a like and share and if you loved it definitely subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out soon. Um, lots and lots of Ryzen videos. I know that my regular upload schedule is Tuesday afternoons and Friday afternoons but in light of Ryzen I have a ton a ton of videos to get uploaded uh, per request by a lot of people um, but you'll see those soon. So 
stick around for that and I will see you guys later.